on this Windrunner. So hopefully that'll help pull them out of this hole. But again, Navi banning the Magnus. And uh, yeah, it's actually no, last time Secret banned the Mag. So this one, I just want to talk about the Mag for a little bit. Obviously the Ursa, I'm pretty sure we've seen that Secret likes to use the Ursa. But I feel like the Magnus isn't someone... He's a hard offlaner to run because of the amount of uh, the cooldown on Skewer as an escape. Is there any reason he's suddenly popular? I mean, we say popular, but I think I, I think there's only a handful of teams that run him. I think, uh, obviously, EG ran him a few times in the recent major tournaments. Once at MLG and once at the, the majors. Mm -hmm. OG, I don't think, picked Magnus at all. Um, yeah, looks like just Seared EG and some of the other CIS teams. I, I personally don't think the heroes are amazing. You know, Eternal Envy, uh, he believes the heroes one of the best heroes in Dota. And obviously anybody who does amounts of RPs or play play Magnus like Arise mm -hmm. or S4, they might make the hero really look strong. But it's just a lot of execution to rely on. And Dota just doesn't give you room to have that execution sometimes. If the enemy wants to focus you with a counter pick, they will do so. And they'll do so with ease depending on the situation. Oh yeah, we saw last game, the lack of space. I mean, I think part of it was the draft. I'm I'm not a huge Wraith King fan, I, I'll admit it now. He's not one of my favorite uh, carries to either watch or see, you know, see in games. But it did also feel like Team Secret was just run down by the very aggress aggressive lineup of Na'Vi. Now, let's talk combos with this IO. Obviously the Tiny is banned out. That's what Secret said they were more afraid of. Do you think we'll get to see some Chaos Knight action? Or is there uh, another unlikely, preferred Unlikely in my partner? opinion. I think, if anything, it's more likely to be a Seven, which will give you the 20 Marmor with the Warcry, yeah. and it's pretty good against Ember in a sense that Ember is really good at kiting, but if the Seven ever gets on top of you, and with a Blink Dagger and an Eye, I'm sure he'll find an opportunity. He'll disperse you down. Slaughter did get banned. Uh, again, I, I thought Secret really should have opted for that earlier, and I don't, I don't know if Ember would have been banned. Um, Witch Doctor. You know, no venture, no gain, and nothing Team really was lost, I guess. Witch Doctor is the pick up here, and again, with the core, I, I don't see much other than other than Bristleback or Sven. Personally. Yeah, I I would definitely, you know, just Chaos Knight's always fun. He's fun to cast, he does crazy stuff, but as you said, Sven, obviously, a better pick up with the uh, way to deal with some of the Dazzle minus armor. Yeah, the and... thing with CK is, like, Ember's like, like, CK is one of the worst heroes in the game against Ember. Like it's very hard to get on top of your chain. Your stun actually is a is a projectile, and Ember has like way many five seconds that or dodge that kind of. And then he also mm -hmm. has the flame guard, which blocks that as well. The initial onslaught yeah. of it. And when you get illusions, he can just cleave off them. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, and apparently it's Acmo, like in Havost. Oh gosh. Oh, nah, they're Russians. I'm, apparently I have pronounced. I'm sorry in advance or in. This isn't in advance. I'm sorry just for pronouncing that wrong. I will, if we go to a game three, I'll have Leo, our wonderful admin who hosts, who is obviously fluent in Russian and English, give me a quick lesson on how to say ACMO. Oh gosh. But ACMO just sounds so cool. I assumed it was like chill friend of Axe. I'm sure it's fine, Lama. I'm oh. sure it's fine. Yoki, Yoku, <laughs> Axmo, ACMO. ACMO. Uh, Either way, we have Timbersaw. It's, it's all the same stuff, I'm sure. Probably somewhere her boast is, you know, very upset about the Xbox, but we have Timbersaw, and I have to say, I like Timbersaw, I'm not sure he's the right hero here, obviously reactive armor, a great way of keeping you safe in that offlane, keeping you uh, able to stay in it, but you've also got a Quap on the deck, and is not seconds, a big fan of burst damage. No, certainly not, but I do think so far he has a lot of tools to withstand the damage. The only stun so far is coming out from Witch Doctor, which is in the form of a paralyzing cask, and he can probably chain away from that in time. Even if yeah. he gets a blink dagger, it'll be that much easier as well. That much more mobility for him. And I think the real threat so far is the Queen of Pain Orchids, but Ten how easy can she get the orchids this game against the against the Weeha Wind Ranger? Five seconds. Okay, so apparently Secret has been on a losing streak since the best of five at Frankfurt. Yeah, they've, so, they've lost every series, and I know that, yeah. if I recall correctly, against Vega, the scoreboard was like 20 to 5, 30 to 5, something of that sort. And then against CIS Rejects, it was the same thing, like 30 to 10, 30 to 10, some stuff like that. So I just want to know the ratio, Ooh. the kill ratio they had. Yep, it was 24 to 7 versus OG, and then 33 to 41, 12 to 27. Um, So those, not grand. And then against Vega, 33 to 11, 26 to 7. It's, what, it's exactly what you were saying. Um... It's 
could also just be it's i think it's something where a lot of us don't talk about it but i mean you have sports teams they go into slumps you know maybe things hurt a little bit maybe you just need to go as a group to a sauna relax a little bit uh i think it's a bit harder oh, yeah. for these guys <laughs> but you know just sometimes... the option i'm sure they would take that <laughs> yeah and i think it's actually pretty normal and i also actually think it's good for the scene I'm a much bigger fan. Don't know if any of you are fighting game fans, but just watched Capcom no, Cup. The scene is so much more exciting when every team can beat every team. Of course, you don't want it at the extent expense of maybe one team performing poorly, but I do think it's something where the scene is healthier when we have a lot of good tier one teams. Oh yeah, yeah. If it's certainly a lot more entertaining when it's volatile and I guess uh, to draw up a parallel, I know the CS:GO scene generally has more of that ability where they can Nine any team can remaining. take a take a set off each other, but. In the, in the meantime, again, Secret, uh, definitely not playing up to par. Uh, it, it could be one of those slumps that they have, and we don't know. Only time will tell, but this has all been since Frankfurt, Frankfurt, and it has all been Star Ladder as well, so maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah, yeah, it could just be that maybe uh, they're not they're not feeling so good with the Russian tournaments, you know? It's maybe 3-2-2 two, two tournament equals 3-2-2 <laughs> two, two situation, who knows? <laughs> yeah, but we've got... Um, a nice Earthshaker ban, AA as well, Navi saying they don't really want to play into that. Obviously also AA is a great Five counter to really. IO, where you relocate in, and AA is like, great, I would love to know exactly where to place my Ice Blast. <laughs> um, so, Secret, let's see what they're picking up as their other Disruptor support. Disruptor problem? Oh, Bounty Ooh. Hunter. Okay, we get to see Pilot Eye kill some couriers. I love it. Although, yeah. I feel like it's harder, as the Bounty Hunter has become more understood and more played, it's really hard to make plays with him, and oh goodness, oh, it's Husker, how goodness. did that happen? So, I have to actually start looking right away. It's a Wisp Huskar. It's not as good as the Dazzle Huskar, but it mitigates a lot of damage to the point where if Secret aren't keen on Huskar, they might And they have two tools to deal with the Huskar, really. Wind Ranger. Timbersaw. And if you want to kind of consider Bounty Hunter as an early game counter that can rotate in and try to fight up the Huskar, it's going to be very, very hard against the healing Witch Doctor. But it, yeah. they could do it if they set up the lanes properly. But again, the main threats are Wind Ranger and Timbersaw. And Timbersaw, to be honest, it, it, it does fall off. Official stat, because Statman has pulled it off, they have lost, with the exception of one game versus Liquid, with a 2.8. So essentially that 3 KD ratio. Uh, it just seems so like they're it's, it's dying not... all over. Like the yeah. heroes. Their heroes just fall, enemy team just kills them over and over again. Like giving them Now they're gonna Husko! They're against a Husko now! They're gonna- yeah, everybody's this, gonna this die! This could be bad. <laughs> so, as you can see, the Windrunner, you know, it's, 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 she's a lot of physical damage and a dazzle on the other team to bring some minus armor, but we'll see. And as you mentioned, it, it doesn't have any- I mean, there's no pure damage coming out of Secret. Well, Timbersaw is a pure gonna... damage monster, but oh, the well, thing we... with Huskar is like, people think, oh, you just get pure damage right away and you run this hero down. No, no, yeah. no, it's not like that. Unless you have something like Omni Knight that drops a lot of pure damage as well mm -hmm. as a repel, which makes him not use uh, Burning Spears, which is the main source of his damage. Yeah. Um, you have to get a ridiculous amount of physical damage or something that just runs him over early game by fighting or whatnot. And the thing with Timbersaw is, he's like very instantaneous pace like once he chains in and uses his whirling death the only thing you have to watch out for is chakram and you can actually toggle through chakram because it does damage uh based on a time kick yeah that's, that's what i was gonna say even though the timber saw has some pure damage it's nothing it's not like a quap where it's big enough that i think you can see exactly. he's below it, it a doesn't threshold. execute right away so it's not it's not yeah as you said it's not the execution type of pure damage and then the physical damage will be lacking early on but upside it is something where if they can bring a little bit of health to the huskar he's a hero that farms enemy heroes he doesn't really farm creeps particularly well right so if he doesn't get off to a great start maybe he doesn't get some kills he doesn't have the easiest to catch up mechanics and then i do think an ember spirit and a windrunner can take over the game but relocating huskar i mean that's the stuff of nightmares Ugh. oh and you know what i really like what nobby's doing here it's something I enjoy particularly because I haven't seen them do it before. An aggro trialing with the Wisp as well as Witch Doctor. You know, the moment you see these heroes, you wouldn't really think that they're the, mo they're the most uh, killing or thirsty type of supports that can play in the aggressive lane. But if you think about it, the amount of sustain that these heroes will give each other will make this Huskar play like a Necro. Like, it's going to be very hard to kill him, and if you commit, mm -hmm. you might just end up dying to a lot of heals. 
Now in mid, Pilot Eye already being the pain that we all know. I'm actually kind of surprised he doesn't have like super fancy Bounty Hunter cosmetics, but either way, he's eaten Dendi's sentry. He's ready to just kind of throw out the casual auto attacks there, and I think Weeha, this mid lane is going to be definitely in his favor, unless he overextends and gives Dendi a kill. So in the bottom lane though, they're running the no, 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 no. Axmo, Akmo. We'll, we'll figure it out one day. We've got Quap with a Witch Doctor against uh, Envy. And ah, so it looks like Artstyle actually rotated bottom after dropping the sentry saying, hey, yeah. it's going to be a solo timber saw. Worst thing that can happen is probably a Wisp, uh, pardon me, or Bounty Hunter coming in. And Wisp Puskar can probably actually fight off this duel until like 4 level 5. So depending on how the early CS goes and who gets the first uh, set of items, this lane, like this lane setup as a whole could really, really favor Na'Vi. Yeah. As I say that, we are 7-3 at the middle line versus 2-0 of Dendi's quite well. Yeah, I mean, it is something where I feel like Weehaw's always, uh, just with the way his hero works up, and as we say, that Huskar is being Huskar. It looks like Pilot die in a world of hurt, and he goes down, tries to get the creep to deny him. No oh, goodness, now this creep is covered in blood. I'd not seen that before. That is disgusting. But yeah, here we have some... Uh... Oh, okay, so Io Huskar is not very commonly picked. It's really interesting, but it has a 100% 100, 100 win rate, this patch, so... Looking grand, and in the bottom lane, we got actions. Alt style is taking a lot of damage from Envy. Go, Envy, kill him! And uh, we do see some look at it go action, but on the wrong end. But they get the dazzle as well, and there's no way Envy can catch up to that blinking co-op. So I think it's it's a tie, but at the same time, I have to say, considering that I think this lane is really scary for an Ember Spirit, I mean, I just feel like all the lanes, except for this mid, vary in favor of Na'Vi. Yeah, I think for the time being, it uh, it really seems that way. And Axmo did something I, I feel like uh, could have been slightly better. So he picked up the Invis Rune with the Poison Touch still ticking on him for another two sex. Mm. If he just waited, he would have been able to salve and then pick up the Invis Rune, come in. Because Envy had no vision of the rune itself, and he would have to just assume that the enemy got a haste or an Invis or something like that. But you can never really play too adaptive to something that you don't see. Could have landed a kill, I think, before the Dazzle rotated. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. I The reason I think this lane is so in favor of Na'Vi is just that even just a point in that Shadow Strike, it is such painful harass for an Ember Spirit. And Quap can just sit there pounding away at him and he doesn't have an easy way to farm. I mean, it's also, you know, two ranged versus one ranged, one melee. Exactly, exactly. It, it is a lot a of harass. Yet. I'm actually oh. surprised he's not going in to pick EMS right away. Yeah, I am surprised as well. I mean, yeah, he does have the ring for extra protection, which will probably end up being an Aquila, but that's not enough against this lane. So it's going to be a rough ride. And taking a peek back at middle, middle now Weehaw is definitely dominating. Yes, Dendi, he's about to hit level 5. He'll stop being able to raise down creeps, but he has definitely fallen a little behind. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really hard lane setup. In fact, the Wind Ranger is naturally good against SF 1v1. It's also the fact that the, there's a bounty hunter missing. Yeah, yeah, the sentry did not out early, so as long as Bounty Hunter is off the map, you just never know exactly. I feel like these days against Bounty Hunter, I mean, we've seen it so many times where the Bounty Hunter comes in, even if you eat the Bounty Hunter sentry, he's going to have more than enough time to eat yours as well. So I'm actually a little surprised that mids don't start with two. Of course, the Bounty Hunter will also start with two. So, it, it you know, it's it's kind of, you generally lose, but... It just seems like maybe you need more support or another way of dealing with the bounty hunter. I think I think this is fine though. I think uh, just semi sacking the mid lane and hoping Dendi can stack oh. for himself kind of. Good. Yeah, kill they say that. Oh no, he actually gets some searing chains under the tower. Can he kill up Axmo? He's boning. Oh. He gets the kill. Axmo went deep for that dazzle and uh, Envy gets it. it. Yeah, Oof. that's not worth it for him at all. He lost the support for a carry and. And he's gonna get solo EXP now, picked up his bottle, of yeah. course, and just picked up boots on the side shop. Still no PMS, I guess he feels he doesn't need it with the Dazzle, but either way, they've been getting the kills. So this lane is actually working out for them far better than I thought it would. Yeah, I think Co-op just overextending. Oh, I mean, obviously... doesn't have boots. Oh, oh no, he's gonna get run down, but here comes Axmo. Can he throw out the slow in time? Envy, he pops up that Flame God, but he's still very, very slow. He's spawning though. One more auto attack onto Odd Style. And now let's see what they can do to this Quap as she blinks away. I was gonna say, not blink, CD. It is 15 seconds at level one, folks. And that's why aggressively going for kills in a lane up against someone who can either heal bomb you if the creeps are nearby or searing chains you, which actually do a lot of damage considering that Quap is a very squishy hero. Uh, it's questionable. Yeah, so his play is very aggressive again. It's uh, it's a lot easier to just rely on being able to run people down on the side lanes, just like what M did. He had boots, he recognized the enemy didn't, and just 
just took the distance and just went for it. And nice, nice stun coming out of it. Yeah, <laughs> good, good coconut bounces. Well played, old style. <laughs> um, but we're gonna see Envy taking a lot of her ass. I mean, he's doing a bit better. I'll have to show it with net worth since oh, he's got. Dandy. Oh no, he's being run down in the mid lane, but it looks like he'll be fine, as you said. Wow, I, this is actually, I think, really dangerous. Obviously, Weeha does have wind run, but. Uh, and probably made that aggressive play because they checked Dendi's mana, seeing that it was low. But you have to be really careful. You overextend against a Shadow Fiend, a couple raises to the face, and you die. Yeah, but the nice thing now is uh, he saw the bounty before, so he's going to be able to stack for himself. And again, because every time he sees the bounty, he's able to bottle crow like this because he has the ward planted, and I guess bounty just uh, invades under the vision. But regardless, he's bottle crowing, he's getting stacks up. And this is why Shadow Fiend is just so good at Even if you lose the lane, you'll scale better and you'll fall. I also wanted to, oh, as we say, he's farming better. We see uh -oh. him getting ganked by Envy. What is this gank? He's going to go down. This is, that was, that was super rude. Four-man gank yeah. on Bendy and there. He's getting the treatment. Oh, they want to do something about yeah. the snap. I think it's a really good play. We're going to be seeing TPs coming in from Witch Doctor. He can definitely try, but I don't think he has anything he can do. I mean, you throw out a stun, it's just going to stun the wrong people, and maybe he'll go down. Searing Chains, he ends up throwing the stun, but it just hits Envy. It doesn't end up bouncing, and they have slows. Envy eats a mango just in case, and now he's level 6. He has Remnant as well. Here comes Dijeral on the Huskar. Let's see if he can pound into anyone, but it doesn't look like it. And while Envy is, you are on fire, it's not going to be enough. Sorry, that is my favorite tooltip. Um, I don't know if you know the whole you are on fire. It's all capital letters when you're being burnt by Huska. Oh. Uh, okay, don't... we'll see. We'll see if we'll see if anybody gets it thrown on them because it is the funniest thing. It is like the only tooltip in the game, I think, that is all caps. And Pilot Die, I don't believe they saw him re. They saw him, they saw him going to go yeah. game with the Shadow Walk, but he okay. was there in range to sap the XP, and so was Envy. So that that creep camp, whatever was left over there, was split into three ways, and then they got like two three hundred yeah. XP out of it. And while obviously he's a big fan, oh. Okay, never mind. That's just Pilot Die standing. Um, while obviously Dendi's gonna be very happy to get the farm, he also needs levels. We can see he's only level seven. Envy, as this kind of farming carry who shouldn't be such a high level, is already six, and uh, Timbo also level seven. So em Dendi's having a hell of a time. Yeah, and as you can see with Envy, he's picked up his Aquila uh, again. Probably not to finish his EMS, but he just wants his TP money in. Most likely gonna rotate to the safe lane. Oh, as I say that, actually, Dazzle's bottom, so I don't know for sure. I know for a fact he doesn't actually want to lean against the Huskar, though. It's like he yeah. might be going for it. I mean, if Weeha comes for a gank, this is really nice movement. Let's be honest, though. Does anybody want to lane against a Huskar ever? Pretty much no. So On the Huskar like... at 8 minutes? That's not a fun lane, whoever you are. Yeah. So we'll see if they can make it happen. Weeha, of course, does have two points up in that shackle already and some power shot action. He could go for the shackle. It would hit now. He opens with the auto attack. There's more than enough to shackle him, and he doesn't go for it. It's really hard under the tier 1 because TP rotations can be coming in, and we see it. Axmo, he's there and ready, but he's not even level 6. And now Dijera, he's going ham, but also not level 6. Less oh, the than 150 is Puppy doesn't have a TP. Oh no, Puppy, he's gonna have to try to walk it off. He does have that shallow grave. He has to be very careful about the timing. Oh, he doesn't manage to get it off. And it looks like he'll be the only casualty as we do see MV uh, has a creep wave on him. He, he's just taking them on a journey. This is, you know how some people walk their dogs. Um, Envy is just very politely making sure that the animals get to see some good enrichment and outdoor time. But oh goodness, he's walked right into a shadow fiend. I don't think that's where you want it to be, Envy. Where is his active remnant? Oh, it's not even in a grand spot. So Envy gonna be just TPing out. Actually, a little bit surprised Dendi didn't maybe think about going for that, but of course with the instant remnant, it might just be a waste of mana to get him low. Yeah, it would have been a waste of time, I think, because he already used the two raises that he could guarantee the hit on the Ember Spirit for, so recognizing that, just that he did as much as he can. He's going to port top now and try to save that tower. Looks like he's able to get the deny, so nice movement. In the meantime, uh, I guess we haven't seen too much of the Queen of Pain in action ever since the, the bottom. Yeah, it does feel like she's been having a rough time finding a good spot to be. She's now popped over into middle. She's getting a little bit of bomb there. But a lot of heroes, again, for Secret lining up here. They actually open up onto uh, onto Envy, and she aggressively blinks forwards. Where is the shackle? It manages to get it. Where's the focus fire, though? Instead, just the power shot. And now, with the threat of Dendi's raises, Mia has to back out. I feel like... Ah, probably too risky to go for the kill there. Just my bloodlust wanting the players to do it, so... Yeah, I'm glad he actually didn't throw out the Sonic Wave. Looks like MB was, uh, he was actually baiting it out the whole time. And I'm not sure if pings would have come into play in that situation, but regardless, he still holds on to his ultimate on the Queen of Pain, so nothing yeah. really lost again. Yeah. Yeah, in the meantime. 
they want to do something on him, but even with three heroes in the in the vicinity, uh, Andy is the real question again. Yeah, he Andy got the... gonna spot out Wisp here. Uh, yeah, he's gonna spot him out. Does Wisp... No creeps nearby to tether to, so an easy kill. Okay, this is Envy's third DD rune of the game so far, I think. Yeah, I'm not. And every I'm not... time the DD has been crucial in getting the kill, so... Yeah, I'm not saying that, you know, obviously these are very high skill players, but something... Love it or hate it about Dota, there is a luck component. And runes a big portion of it. So I feel like Envy, I don't know if they can get the kill on bottom with this DD, especially since it just expired, but you could suddenly make Dita Raw's life a little bit more dangerous. Although he has support coming in. And this is where it's also really rough. DJ Ra, I think I have to say he's playing really well. Just general Dota things, making sure that he doesn't extend too far out. And that way it's really hard to gank him. Well, he is on the weave now, so if they want yeah. to do anything, probably now. There's some pings coming out, but again, Envy's not... Not a toss and get out. And as you mentioned, even though he was affected by uh, almost 18 minus armor because the weave was sticking up, not feeling like there was a whole heap they could do, and now Highlight die, realizing that he may be in a bit of a pickle. Envy actually remnants in. Okay, he's he's just casually farming the enemy woods. No, no need to uh -oh. do his own woods. Oh, they're gonna actually give it a bit of a go onto Dendi. The stun does come out, and they put down sentries. So, Envy away. Um, this game's a lot calmer, I would say, than the last game. Secret already doing a lot better than they were. And we can see the game is suddenly starting to fall in their favor. There's a mid tower being taken. We have a relocate onto Pylai Die, and they don't manage to touch him with the dust. So unfortunately, this relocate gank gonna really whiff. Yeah, in the meantime, Dendi does get the runes. A nice thing for them. Somebody we haven't touched upon in a while, Misery. Just being at top here, free farming the entire game, I, I think, basically. He was going up against the Huskar and whatnot early, so it's very, it's been very easy for him, very quiet for him for the last six minutes. Surprisingly enough, he's not high on the net worth, but again, Timbersaw not getting kills, so you're limited to farming neutrals. Not yeah. The best situation. Envy. Oh gosh, Envy is a ham master. Do they have detection? It doesn't look like it, and ham not gonna pay off this time. Invis ruined for Queen of Pain, keeping her alive, and it looks like the Regus is gonna be happening. What else do they have? I mean, they they see this, I'm pretty sure, with Secret. You can see that someone's being tethered, if you look closely. So, um, not, not the best gank attempt either way. We're going to be seeing Dendi taking a little bit of harass, and that'll be it. Okay, let's talk some item pickups. Obviously, Weeha, he's looking towards that Aghanim Scepter Husker. We can see that he's going to build Helm of the Dominator. Already got that omelet. Do you think this is a solar crest game? As he goes in for the first dunk, Puppy, he's going to just try to TP out, but will it be enough? He's got five stacks on him. He's going to have to use that heal in base, and oh, I'm not sure the fountain's going to oh be enough. Oh my Puppy's god, dead. he's actually going to kill him. Yep. Oh, I need the mouse over that you're on fire. Oh. Whiffed. Completely the whiffed. But yeah, that, that's the power of Huskar, and I was going to say, I'm not sure if he's going to be a Solar Crest Huskar. Heaven's Halberd is something that's also popular on that hero. Also really nice against Windrunner, who she might not have her BKB up for a while, just with depending on the pace of the game. So I'm really interested to see what exactly Dicha Ra decides to go with, and how many more little heroes he picks up. Dendi, the Shackle doesn't last though, but in comes the Chakram. Dendi's going to to walk through it, and now suddenly Weeha in a lot of trouble. Pumps that Windrun, but he's going to go down either way. Lots of things hitting him, and with the Windrun over gonna be popping to those burning spears these plays from secret kind of almost too aggressive i would argue it feels like they keep going for plays under tower and i think the game's actually in their favor if they just sit back and farm because yeah, their heroes they scale split, better i agree if they just split push and take it slow they could definitely keep going in their favor but as it stands you know going for all these kills with these magical damage heroes and not having enough of the enough of the tools to either burst or commit to bursting or commit to breaking their heals i mean yeah Really hindering their process to maintain map control. Yeah. In the meantime, Envy's almost got his thoughts, so that's good news for them. They did lose some kills, and again, Timbersaw doesn't look like he's been doing too much. He's actually picked up an urn of shadows. Um, not an item that I would expect. Yeah, and they're gonna see um, what they can do about the side pushing. I think Timber's saying with that urn, he wants to be more involved in the kills, and of course, urn is also, I believe, isn't urn pure damage? Am I? Cray -cray. It is, it is. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, it's okay, a nice it's, item it's, to have against Huskar in general. It's, it's not going to be the best against Huskar, but as you just pointed out, it, it's nice, it's something, and it's always extra stuff. Uh, and I feel like every team should have an own, but either way, I wouldn't 
be surprised if Secret maybe just decide to slow things down here and uh, keep up their farming because I really do think if this goes late, obviously Bounty Hunter wants to be getting those track kills and so on, but if this goes late, Windrunner, Ember, outdo a Huskar, Shadow Fiend any day of the week and the co-op will start to become a little bit negligible because although the ult is pure damage, you can tank up a little bit and also pick up BKBs since the rest of the toolkit's magic, so. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I only I only question the urn because I feel like uh, as, as you said, it, it looks like he wants to get more involved. But right now, for the last five ten minutes, he's been getting a fixed amount of gold every minute just by yeah. farming, and you can kind of gauge what you're dealing with. Just an 800, 800, uh, yeah, 800 gold sink that that you're not making any use of at all. It's basically a Sobi mess for this guy right now. It would have been much better on Bounty Hunter, I feel, who's actually going <laughs> around playing near the Huskar or playing near other heroes in general. So, yeah, okay. it's gonna delay his bloodstone that much. I think this bloodstone could have actually come by now if he didn't have. Oh, and Puppy again. Is he gonna get dunked? It looks like he is. Goodbye, sweet Puppy. He actually throws out the weave, understanding that he's not gonna make it into the fountain. Oh, we can quickly. Oh, I miss it. Um, DK Ra actually got pretty low there from his omelet toggling, and now they are back in. I think hoping that the weave would do work when people came up to fight here, but instead, all of Secret, they need to get out Misery, he's gonna Timber Chain away, DJ Ra is taking a lot of damage, can they turn and fight, there's gonna be a Shackle, where's the Focus Fire from Weeha, it's on cooldown, he used it on the tower, and that means that they can't engage in the slightest co-op, maybe she can throw out a Shadow Strike here, seeing if she can catch someone out, they don't have anything to stop Weeha here, gonna just, you know, walk over him with the tether, doesn't stun, and Envy is gonna get on out, has those bots up, has an Aquila, probably gonna work on the Battle Fury now, and he might be able to get it, around that 25 minute mark, depending on how this game goes. But holy, Tana, he's gonna go for the wave cut. Yeah, he is. Oh, can he get the courier? Kill the courier, MV? I, I don't think, oh. he needs three hits, and he's not gonna get three hits while the courier's moving at the flying movement. He yeah, he's gonna cut the creep wave three. Still right now, actually. He's gonna pour it elsewhere now, and looks like if they can get the follow-up at bottom, this is the best follow-up Secret has this game so far, in terms of anything that Navi does and a response to it. Nice yeah, 100%. Secret. It you know, you're not you're not gonna fight into them right now. You're not fighting into a Huskull until you get much bigger. So just lay off and get Envy some items. Because honestly, if he gets Battle Fury, even just Battle Fury Chrysalis, I think he starts being a real problem for Nelvi yeah, to handle. Yeah, he becomes that much more of a threat to the Huskar, as well as just the combo in general. You can you can imagine Navi's team fight heavily predicates around them kind of five manning into a death ball around the Huskar. And the cleave might actually end up doing work. If not just bursting Wisp and Witch Doctor. I mean they're so they're so fragile. Also, they have an Ember, Timbersaw, Windrunner into a lineup that only has Paralyzing Cask as a stun. How I just realized. Is. So, Ember... Oh, I almost... <laughs> Do you have a... I have a bind for when Roshan is. Never mind. It looks like all style. He's gonna throw out the physical damage, but Envy's just gonna kill him off. No such luck there. So Envy getting another kill under his belt. I almost, when Roche went down, popped my hotkey for... I press Y up, and then it takes timer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like almost pinged the clock as well, but you can't ping when you're observing, because otherwise the players might see it. Oh, you can't ping items or times. So yeah, I almost did it there. I've been playing a bit too much myself. So. Not, not here or there. Dendi, he has finished up a mech and Assange, and I really think this solidifies Oh gosh, Secret, they're in a bad spot. Weeha, he's gonna try to TZ out on this one. He may just oh, go no. down. It's gonna be the Aegis, and that was immediately burnt, and I don't think he has a way out since he just used oh, Requiem of Souls. Goodbye, Weeha. A couple more auto attacks, and he's gonna fall. Really nice play there from Navi, catching him out. They just completely nullified the effect of getting that Roshan. Yeah, that was a really, really nice pick up. Axmo, I think he recognized that with his ultimate coming out, they can burst him down through the, through the Win Ranger win run. Andy and Axmo just working in conjunction, they're using both their spells, the raise as well as the ultimate. Very nicely done by them. Huge kill. Again, I Navi to... really wanted map control with that Aegis as well as Ember jumping around and Bounty Hunter, but that's a, that's in a slightly weaker form. An art style. A caught out again, but this time he's got a little bit of backup, but there are so many heroes from Secret in the lineup. We can see Misery coming in, they're gonna throw out the Paralyzing Cask, it actually hits onto Envy, but no more. At the same time, he doesn't have Flame God anymore, and here comes Dendi. If he can get any sort of action in onto Envy, he's gonna go down, but they're gonna slow them up with that Chakram. And uh, actually has to pop the mech to keep Alt Style alive, but there is a hasted DJ Raw. Misery, you need to... Well, uh, yeah, you need to do that. The Timber Chain action away. I was gonna say, I feel like the name of the game here for Secret should be, for the next maybe even 15 minutes, Split Push. Because with Dendi having up this mech, and the fact that they have a Huskar, I just don't think their fight stands up in the slightest. I mean, Bounty Hunter's bringing nothing to the fight right now. Dial might heal, but it doesn't matter too much against those Burning Spears. It's uh, it's definitely gonna be hard. It's, it's a sad situation if the Dazzle can grieve. 
to assume that the target's gonna still die because okay. of the burning spear DOT as well as how long it stays on the target. Whopping 8 seconds, yeah, like 160 damage total, every spear. By the time you cast the grave, the target's always gonna have 5 to 8 of them on top, so... Yeah, Pretty it's... much guaranteed. It does feel like split push might be the way to go. Um, at the same time, Nabi has done a really great job of getting rid of this net wealth lead and the oh, experience. Ever. He doesn't oh, have a no. remnant. He has one off to the side, but he doesn't have a good escape path. He's gonna end up running all the way down. He's looking for a spot to bots out, but oh no, they have a stun. Where's the paralyzing call? It's gonna come out, and Envy goes down. And not only does he go down, that was his mega kill streak. Envy had been doing an excellent job of managing to pick up kills across the board. It's gonna put back that timing on that battle fury. That that was honestly just thing around around the enemy woods. They've they've had this place like warded and vision provided around the area by Pilot Die for the longest time. So to an extent, he's feeling safe because he got a lot of kills here too. But not having a background in that situation, I mean, it was up, or, or rather, it just came up. So. Speaking of dire vision, they have woods like they want to be really aggressive, and I think this tells us a lot about secret. They really do want to get those pickoffs, but. I just don't think they have the right composition for it right now, you know? It's it's really hard to take advantage. Again, they just can't fight into them at all, so the only, yeah. only way you can take advantage of these wards is just by uh, looking at where the enemy is and dodging them. And they- Again, just not getting exposed in the in the woods there without a remnant. It's not the situation you want to be in this situation. Yeah. Misery does have the Bloodstone that you mentioned up. Now, of course, that item received heavy nerfs in 6.85. So it's not kind of the, oh, look, Tempasaur, he has a Bloodstone. Things going to snowball from here. It's still something where he needs to put in a lot of work. Do you think this is an Ags Tempasaur game, or do you need something like the Shivas to help your team out ASAP? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I feel like I feel like Ags is really good against the Huskar, as well as the general push coming out of Navi. But Shivas wouldn't be too bad. Um, oh, we're having an aggressive go on to Weeha. This Orchid is out on Axmo, and now with a bunch of Furies coming in with that relocate, Weeha's just dead. He knows that he's trying to fight, but he's gonna fall eventually, actually to the IO. And now Na'Vi looking like they're in a good place to push a tower if they so choose. Or just go back to farming, I mean... Mm. They're, they're definitely in the driver's seat right now. They're the ones in control, and they're controlling the pace, of course, very nicely. Nice track coming out of Pala Dai, but again, it doesn't give that much vision. Just walks towards, walks just by the edge of the sentry, yeah. but they don't have enough chase down as well as the lockdown necessary to keep up. It's like just a mid push follow up, and uh, still the problem stands that, especially without the Wind Ranger, they cannot fight into this Huskar, who already has the Halberd up, as you mentioned earlier. Not yeah, enough he tools. He decided to go Halberd, not... I, I thought, you know, it's kind of a toss-up since there's Minus Armor in the game, but I really like the, to uh, the Halberd here against a Windrunner. She has Blink, she still needs a damage item, and if she's forced to go BKB before that, this is just icing on the cake for Huskar. So he's going to have a grand old time, and I believe BKB is the only thing that dispels Heaven's Halberd in this game. So, and death, I guess. Have to remember about that dispel on death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she needs like two more items for sure. She needs the MKB and she needs the BKB. And given the rate of this game, she might not find the time to find it. So. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we mentioned it in the draft. It did feel like Secret have a lineup that needs a lot of farm to get online. As I say this, we're having. Oh, goodness. They try to close, get the go. Close. Can they kill who's relocating in? It's going to be DJ Ron. We are. He needs to pop that window on. He does manage to get it off, but he doesn't have Shackle for three more seconds. Axmo coming back in on that quap. And now it feels like all of Secret need to get all the way out of here. They are buying time for Envy, but really only buying time if he doesn't end up going down here. And oh no, he's come into the engagement. I hear that we've got a Shackle onto Seneco. They're going to lose the IO. But again, this Huskar is big enough that it doesn't feel like he needs it. There's going to be a silence coming out onto Envy. He may have Searing changed them up, but I don't think this is the fight you want to take in again. He's just trying to play evasively. He could TP top and maybe get his farm on after dropping a remnant, so he's got a few options. He does go for another Searing Chains onto Dichira, but again, I don't think he's a target they can take down right now. No, he, he doesn't care about the chains. As a matter of fact, he's probably thanking Envy because he lost life points without being forced to pop armlet or anything like that, so... Yeah. He's and we find... And then we finally TP's up to top tower. He actually almost, he's very close to that Battle Fury. He's like 150 he gold. Rolling Blade, and he'll probably yeah. drop an or like the Stealth Shield, maybe. Don't know. Yeah, he's gonna pick that up and maybe help the split push, but when Dendi comes into the lane like this, he can't stay around. Yeah, and he remnants down to the bottom lane. I mean, his remnant placement has also been really ballsy on Envy's part. It feels like he's really playing with fire here, and I'm. 
I don't want to say anything because I feel like I'm definitely not, you know, I'm... I'm a Dota 2 caster. I don't want to... I don't know exactly what Secret's game plan is here, but it does feel like if they can just make space for Envy and Weeha, they have this game in the bag and they're really not going for it. We actually see Misery. He's been gone on by Axma. Where is the... Oh, the relocate comes oh in. But goodness. the Shackle, it manages to hit onto the Dominated Creep. They're working on Suneko. They're going to manage to take him out, but they still have to deal with Dichara. And they've lost the Timber Sword. Pilot died. Tone's invisible. How do they not have detection? It was probably on the IO. Of course it was on the IO. He's their support player. You don't make your cause by detection, and that's going to cost them an easy kill on Pylai Dai, who is still running around tracking people. The rest of Secret is up here. I think they've seen Dendi. The silence coming up with the shackle. Max range. How does that land? We are. He's going to pop that wind run, and they have now the shackles as well from De uh, from Envy going down. Dichira, he's on the back foot. I actually think if he turns and fights, he would die, but he'd probably take a few of them into that grave with him. But we are getting another Another shackle, focus fire off cooldown because he has the Ags and this is exactly what Secret needed to get themselves back into the game. That's going to be a 2,000 net worth swing, maybe even more when they, yeah, that was almost a 3,000 net worth swing when we include the kill on DGRL. So well played to Secret, finally making something happen. And I have to say a lot of that really good patience, a lot of players go on the shackle player. Instead, we all make sure to take out Seneco. Yeah. Go for him, able to chase down heroes again. The, with the Wind Ranger Wind Run, it's so hard to take down this hero without the, a ridiculous amount of magic damage because Oscar, you, you just can't uh, life break into the hero and not expect to get turned around without the Wind Run. It, too much. So even Huskar finding himself in a spot where he's vulnerable now because he probably wants an AC. Um, not sure if he's going to ever convert the Brown Boots into anything, but if he doesn't get the AC, he'll need the MKB. But then oh, that would yeah. hurt his tank. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen this. I also cast a lot of the South American Dota, and there is a Huskar build in South America, which is the No B Boots build. Nice. And they'll go all the way up to... Usually they get it after the Heaven's Halberd or the Solar Crest, but they will pick up Omelette, Helm of the Dominator, and another item, and they're still rocking No Boots, and they just use the Dunk to get around. <laughs> they just life break people to move. It's actually kind of... I think it's something which here he can do it very well because with the IO you're often being relocated into range but the life break actually oh we can't see it because he's dead but the life break actually doesn't have a huge range and so having some extra movement speed is helpful on the hero but yeah. either way puppy's picked up a solo crest this is about to help a lot you throw it on that Huskar not only is he easier to kill but maybe if you're lucky he'll miss some of those flaming spears for goodness yeah, sake yeah yeah this is very disruptive he's definitely going to need the MKB or at least the BKB now Again, it's, uh, it's getting to that point where Na'Vi, they have this lineup, they don't have too many disables, too many tools to shut down the split push. So they, they should have tried to do something or something, and it's just been a while ever since they took Weehaw's Aegis uh, nicely at bottom down there. They haven't been main making the aggressive moves. Weehaw's already got one piece of his MKB. So I'm really surprised by this. Io's going for a Yule. I feel like, obviously, you know, Io's a hero, very flexible in what items he can go for, and he's pretty happy just having a bottle and an urn, although of course if you can get more farmed it makes sense. I I mean, I think yes, the Yules will help disrupt Windrunner's damage output, and maybe MVs as well, but it wasn't the item I was expecting, I guess. Hmm. In the meantime, there's a gem on Axmo, so he's able to scout Ooh. some wards and really find the Bounty Hunter lingering around. I think they I think they just spotted each other, but yeah, Bounty Hunter mm. just blinks away with this newly purchased... Yeah. And uh, this is going to be really rough. They actually smoked up three, hoping that Puppy, Weeha, and Misery, they should have enough damage output to pick off one person. But they understand completely what's going on on the lineup of Na'Vi. And since they just got a gem, they were grouping up dewarding, making sure that their jungle's safe. We can see they're finally at a vision advantage in their own jungle, for I, what I feel is the first time in this game, since previously Secret had a ward here, a ward here, a ward here. <laughs> you know? It had a lot of vision. The last few minutes, of course, that's been all expired at the same time, and all they have is the two wards remaining as soon as that ends, I think. So, they have one on the map now, and one that got countered in the woods. Yeah. So, as you said, vision's limited. Now they're gonna get this push, it looks like we might be seeing a tower trade. Weeha, of course, gonna clear that tower, oh, even maybe faster than all of these heroes. Also, Weeha, doing good work towards that MKB, gonna help out. They actually glip it, and uh, Weeha's not gonna be able to get it, so... They take one bit. and protect one. 
Yeah. Pretty good move by Navi here. Radiance yeah. middle tower is um, I also have to say I'm a little bit surprised that Pylai Dai went for the Blink Dagger. Obviously, it's helpful here when there could be a relocate in. You need Radiance to get away as fast as possible so you're not dusted. Or maybe the Quap blinks in. You need to blink away after being silenced. I feel like Secret, since they're fighting into a lineup that has a mech and they don't have one, and, you know, obviously Bounty Hunter these days is the mech carrier into Guardian Greaves eventually, a little surprised. But are we going to see a high ground push? No kind of control here, but of course with Weehaw having an Aghanim Scepter, you can go for this. You can just kind of poke at this, uh, and they are letting Navi. them on Navi. They just want the Roshan onto the Huska, or maybe the Dendi. We're going to be seeing folks relocating in. They've taken Dendi back with them. They throw out the Chakram. It's going to slow people up, but Weehaw, he needs to get away. He does have that Blink active, and he may just Blink over the ridge there, or be thinking about Blinking back in for some action. And we also can see that Pylai Dai had a great idea that they were going for this Aegis. And now Envy is here, because of course... Who doesn't want your entire team to have a Blink Dagger? Envy's not going to be left out. They're just going to take down an Alpha Wolf with great prejudice. This is animal cruelty. They're doing it. They're doing it live. Um, Yeah, so they stop not only Na'Vi from taking the Aegis and uh, now have good vision of it, they can still keep pressuring this top tower. Weehaw's just chilling up here, and as long as he doesn't go down, which is definitely a big ask, but as long as he doesn't go down, he can keep chipping away at that since he's got the Ags. Yeah. He's probably just gonna stick around the area and just keep power shotting down the waves. He has the blink dagger and he recognizes that the Navi don't have too many tools to jump on him or get on top. So this could very well turn into a pretty bad engagement for Navi if they don't approach this with a lot of caution. We yeah. see Ember Spirit up here now as well. As you mentioned, he had the blink dagger from earlier and that gives him even more ability as well as chase ability. And did Envy just... his only remnant expired, so he... Yeah. I mean, I think the Blink is also, it's his way of countering the Orchid. It looks like he doesn't feel like going a Manta since it will delay other damage output, and it doesn't exactly help against a lot of the other stuff coming out. Oh, oh Quap's gonna see them, though, and now Envy, he's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna actually kill off Axel, it looks like, and with Seneco going down too, the gen is on the deck. Envy, he does manage to pick it up. He drops his bottle for it. They have to get some kills here, though, otherwise, oh, goodness, Dendi on the back line is getting into a world of trouble, but Dijira doing Huskell things. That was the saddest timber chain I've ever seen coming out of Misery, and now... Weehaw, he's gonna be dunked on Envy. He's trying to do damage, but he just needs to leave with the gem. And it looks like he should be able to Weehaw as well, going for that TP out, but he's gonna go down instead. Oh, goodness, Envy, he's still there. What is he doing? He wants to go ham. He wants to kill somebody off. He's actually gonna remnant right on top of DJ Raw, but then remnanting to the second one, getting away, TPing out. He secured them the gem. Wouldn't be surprised if he just drops it off in base. Yeah, there he goes. Drops it off in base. Makes pretty gem sounds. I think his bottle was killed by someone. Lost to the world. And yeah, um, actually, I think a good team fight coming out of Secret again, and especially since they took it kind of in a really awful spot. Gem, of course, not shown in this experience and net worth exchange. So well played. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure if Soneko had the opportunity to actually introdu introduce his Yule Scepter. I feel like he could have delayed his death a little bit, but he, he melted so fast. And we yeah. are coming in with the uh, from the side with a nice shackle on two targets. Starting with the execution on Axmo here, so he all he could do was uh, Orchid, and he ulted nicely, but it missed the. Uh, it only hit Weeha actually. So, yeah, yeah, nice fight again by Secret. It's a lot of a lot of vision related fights. They had to track on a couple of heroes, and it didn't give the same vision as a. But yeah. they initiated the fight the way they wanted to, and the exchange reco uh, it results in a three to two exchange in favor of Secret. And maybe freeing up some map space to go do something like the Roshan, though. Of course, they still have this dominated creep, the Hill Troll Priest. Who gives actually really good healing per uh, mana cost is going to be in that Rosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. He just but... poured it onto the creep itself. He's going to Rosh and we have going to spot him out. Oh no. I didn't realize he put it. I thought you were oh knowing about. Oh goodness. The dunk is continuing through the blink. We He's going to pop that uh, wind run and maybe be able to get out of the shackle. Oh on my Rosh goodness. DJ Raw is going to go down. No, but the mech comes out. They don't have enough damage. MB, he's trying to do what he can from the high ground. Seneco managing to relocate back in. The courier somehow died. I didn't even catch how that one went down, but that was a beautiful shackle. There's gonna be another set of searing chains. Seneco onto a tree and goodbye. They managed to pop off the Requiem of Souls. It, the debuff does hit a number of people, but it is just gonna reduce auto attack damage. And suddenly going for this Roshan looks grim indeed for the lineup of Navi. Well played, I have to say. Okay, we all make jokes about how Shackle Shot hits improbable uh, shackles. You know, it does actually even have, I think, a 50 bit degree of. Oh, and he's going back in. We'll talk about Weeha in a second. Are they going to keep going? They're tracking up a lot of these players, knowing the Quap's movement really going to help them out here. At the same time, Dijira, he is still scary as anything. And if he has backup, I'm not sure they can take him out, especially since Seneko is back. Okay. Seneko is like... back along with the rest of Navi, indeed. <laughs> 
<laughs> well played. Um, oh goodness, Envy! He managed to get the pick off on the Quaff. Now we're gonna see the Yules. It's gonna get rid of uh, that Flame God. And oh, DJ Ra, he's been caught out again. But do they have the damage? The MKB isn't up yet. And there was so many misses. It looks like Puppy gonna sacrifice his life for a Weeha. Weeha is actually still staying around. He does have the Blink away, but the, now they've it's been disabled. He has to Wind Run here. He'll have Blink up in two seconds. They can't do anything. There he goes. He's out. But Envy, oh gosh, she's still in there. Working on Dendi. Envy and Denby. Dendi, actually quite similar. I'm constantly concerned I'm saying the wrong thing, I say, as the outro of this team fight. They might actually still be going in for more. Oh, goodness. Envy, what are you doing? You don't have the Flame God. It's finally up. He's going to take quite a bit of damage. He's going to remnant away, but suddenly Misery, he's in the thick of it. Timber Chain has a really short cooldown, though, and again, since they have no lockdown, he just goes Scepters and Timber Chains away. He is going to be fine. Oh, goodness, or is he? He needs to get up another Timber Chain, but he's too short. Ends up losing a bunch of Bloodstone charges and Misery goes down. And we still see, by the way, Envy is still just farming creeps casually in this bottom lane. He is out of remnants by the looks of things. Gonna go for that TP out and he should be fine. He actually has to use the final remnant. He couldn't place any more aggressively and another one comes up of cooldown. But he is playing so riskily. He's really living on the edge there. And, you know, that remnant that he used at the end... And I'm not sure if it's really necessary. Nice yeah. That remnant at the end there was really, really nice by him. Oh my goodness, we are, we are going in again at the same time on the other side of the team fight. We do see Pilot Eye finally go down. I think this may have been Weehaw's last hurrah. How is he going to get his Blink Dagger off this way? He actually power shots hoping to get some more movement in the creeps, but he is going down and... <laughs> yeah. Walking out and finally Rokan. Finally, I just feel like maybe Secret, again, as we talked about, they're not out of it by any means yet. They, I think they're actually starting to come online now with their heroes, especially since they've got the Cleave and uh, Chrysalis up on MV. But I'm not try quite sure they need to be playing so aggressively here. I, I understand that the Roshan is a big objective, but it does feel like if they just sat back a little bit, maybe use the Slider Fists over the pit, they could have done a lot of work, especially with the lack of lockdown. We're going to be seeing a relocate coming out. They've brought two healing he heroes, though. And Misery, he's silenced up. He's taking a lot of damage, but he should be able to ch uh, chain away. Instead, he's thrown up in the Yules. And goodbye, Misery. Down to three Bloodstone charges. At the same time, they're working away on art style. Uh, MB actually can't because of the Ghost Scepter. And now the rest of the team... No, what? Where is the rest of Navi gone? They're just letting art style die. MB actually remnants away, understanding how close they are. So these team fights really weird i'm not gonna lie and i actually want us to check on items because i feel like okay i feel like the net worth very close to even experience very close to even and we probably missed some items we all still doesn't have that mkb there was a query that went down with 1850 net worth oh um, let me check what was on it cannot because uh, uh yeah i don't have for dia it was a stout shield for so... radiant the courier died I, cool. I don't know how to uh, check it was it. oh it was the full AC not full well it's the chainmail and the oh, assault the cuirass components, huh? so yeah okay. it's actually a real pain just for folks who are wondering you have to rebind courier um I use config files I don't know about you clairvoyance but you have to rebind the courier to a new you have to unbind it from the previous hotkey you have it on and then rebind it to a new hotkey so um oh yeah. I see you know I actually it's... just click I click my regular courier hotkey yeah. and I can see it now so yeah something I learned today for me it's overloaded because in casting f1 f2 and so on um f2 is courier default and f2 in casting is showing radiant or f3 yeah, yeah, is dia yeah. vision Division. so mm -hmm. yeah so i set it to nine big big old casting tricks nobody probably cares about this let's talk about the game we have an aegis of course up on the hot he's got heaven's hell but he has an ac on his dead courier um and dendi sergeant yasha mkb helm of the dominator this is a shadow fiend that hits like a truck but cleave doesn't care about your evasion so maybe they can do something up here to help out and let's see they're actually maybe thinking about trading do you think this is the right decision oh no they're actually they certainly can't find into the aegis i don't think without losing some as oh, as they say, they that, go fight into the Aegis. We are. He does have the MKB up, but the tower's already gone. MB, he's gonna need to crit for his life. He needs to get the biggest of crits. They're gonna be a rack down by the looks of things, but we are. He's going ham. Requiem Souls coming out, reducing all of their damage. Ryo has to buy back, but he gets shackled immediately off of the buyback. They have taken down the raid boss and alt style to boot. And now let's see if they can find anything else. There's another gem on the deck. They have to catch up Dijira again. They might be able to save their base, and Dijira, he is caught in by those searing chains. He is going down at a gem. M pops out of him. They are going to be very happy on Secret for Trade. Do they have anything to start Axe Mode? They get it. So well played there. By Misery. I mean, okay, I'm not going to lie. I I didn't have a lot of faith in this Timbersaw. Not because it's Misery. Just because the hero is not terribly popular right now. But 
Well played. And that was a buyback on the IO as well, which is going to stunt his item growth. Yeah. You know, that fight was actually done very elegantly, I say. Um, although I do want to admit, I think Na'Vi, having five heroes on the high ground hitting the hitting the tower there, and then mm -hmm. letting Cle Ember cleave off of every hero, especially yeah. with the Daedalus now, uh, I don't know about that one. I, I thought how the fight was going to be approached was the Huskar and the, the Queen of Pain would just be the... Not the Queen of Pain. Huskar and the Shadow Fiend would be the ones hitting the Raxus. And everybody else would be way far out of the Sleight of Fist range. And you tether the Huskar and still be out of Sleight of Fist or... Well, maybe not Sleight of Fist, but at least out of Shackle range. He got Shackled nice. twice. Once before he, uh, before he died and af once, uh, once again after he died and came back. Yep. So, I don't know, I think I think there was a lot of positional error coming out of Na'Vi in that engagement. It is kind of why people pick up the Windrunner into the IO. It is traditionally a bit easier to land those shackles since you know there's going to be someone behind. So, really well played there. And Envy is starting to get bigger and bigger. He'll probably swap out the Wand or the Aquila at some point for another damage item. And because there are so few stuns, I mean, other than the Awkward on Quap, Envy doesn't have too much other than damage to worry about. He can just go... He can go full glass cannon, oh, I feel like. Oh, die. die. He's murdering couriers, as he often does. And wait, was that... AC oh, again, yeah. It, it didn't actually complete on DRI. It just stopped there. And it's probably one of those courier oh, things no. when it has too many commands. Did That's he... so devastating. It was exactly... This AC has been delayed for, I think, nine minutes now. This, this is... is fantastic for... Well played, Pylai Dai. Well played. Very, oh. very... And he's got a gem now too, so he's gonna be able to counter up some wards yeah. if there are any. Unfortunately for him, there's actually nothing outside of Navi. <laughs> yeah, kind of funny. Being. All of their visions already been dewarded. Pilot are doing a great job. They have this ward. This is a catch out MB when he's doing remnant plays. Um, but other than that, they don't have too much. And speaking of MB doing remnant plays, it is. Oh, oh, let's see that auto attack follow. He doesn't have crits though on Dendi, so it's not gonna be that hard of an auto attack. It's still oh, pretty, yeah. yeah oh, it, it even stunned. It did the mini stun. Yeah, from the so, MKB. And if he was yeah. in the AoE, he'd be taking minus six armor as well. Probably more damage. <laughs> Dendi is really, really strong. I think his next item is actually gonna be a very critical pick. He obviously can't do as much as you want to get evasion against Ember because you can just dodge yeah. that sleight of fist. He can't do it against the Wind Ranger. It's just not logical. I think with Oscar picking up the AC, he might want to invest into. Uh, I mean, I think BKB is fine, honestly. He just wants to tank up and maybe even a Blink, just something that helps him get in there. Maybe Satanic just to tank up even better. You're not he a fan a of options. more damage. Oh, I think he went Sheep Stick actually. Oh and Radiant my God! Courier again. This time, the completed Sheep Stick for three minutes until 45 minutes, basically. <laughs> Now he cannot leave the base. Also, I feel like that was a rebought courier, wasn't it? Yeah, it they was already a new one. Had... Yeah, the other one has the AC, this one has a sheep stick. I don't know if I can check the rebought courier's life. I can't, but as you said, it was the sheep stick, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, I don't think I've been in a game with this many couriers die. Uh, Joy, a joy to call something like this. <laughs> oh, this I'm is, sorry, this is ridiculous. Comical. As you can see, this is the result. Navi, they're missing out like. 10k worth of farm between the missing AC and the sheep stick. And I don't know how that's counted in net worth growth. Because now we're seeing that Secret is 7.5, almost 10,000 net worth ahead. I think it's counting those big items. We'll, we'll see. I actually don't know how this works. Perhaps Vengeance knows. So since there is a bit, finally, a lull in the action, this game, uh, not quite a kill a minute, but still, considering how they could have played it on Secret, I think we're all the action packed. Let's quickly take a look at items. Alt Style has another gem up on him. Huskar is rocking, uh, well, when he finally... Oh, oh we have a relocate. And he got caught out by the Tinker Ward. Finally, and yeah, as you said, that ward it does work, and MB's gonna know, I think, now that there's yeah, a ward he, up here. Yeah, he knows for sure now. Really nice pickup by him. Even Axmo picking up a sheep stick. So all of a sudden, when the couriers do respawn, Davi have two more tools to catch out a sneaky Ember, mm -hmm. uh, Ember spirit or the Wind Ranger. It's pretty devastating. So I. I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see how this team fight goes. It feels like if both teams just play it cool and don't force these engagements too much, because I think a lot of the problem that Na'Vi had in the top engagement was that they really forced it. You see this in games a lot, that going for the, oh goodness, the shackle doesn't latch, doesn't quite get it, but if that shackle had latched, and we are, he's actually going to be stunned up here. Who are they bringing in though? He's wind running, but the ball's from Io hitting him, and now he's picking up. We all might be going down here. Timbersaw is coming in to give him a handout. They don't see him. Oh no, he takes the damage. He can't blink away. He's up in the air with the Yules and Misery, I think just have to let Weeha go down. A really unfortunate series of events, and uh, Pilai Dai, he's actually 
trying to de-ward this, but yeah, is he's unable struggling. to. <laughs> I'm not sure if he tried to blink up there, but unfortunately for him, heroes cannot go up there. Only one. Yeah, I think he tried to blink and then tried to force stop as well. So yeah. not... Now he purchased it, as you can see, in his stash. He's got an obs board ready to go. He's going to need a tangle with that as well, because yeah. he's the melee hero. He can't kill that. It's going to be... Maybe he hopes that he can blink up there with... Or maybe Envy will be around, since no, Envy no, they, not, None box. of them can kill... Oh yeah, Envy has the battle Yeah, because he has so... the battle fear, Yeah, so. yeah. I, yeah, um, <laughs> very comical game, somewhat. Either way, we have items coming out on people. We relocate. haven't talked about this. Oh, no, we have no chance to talk about it. We have a relocate coming out, and it looks like they're just going to melt. Misery, he's going to go down five bloodstone charges. He's actually managed to get some back, but I think after the relocate ends, they might be able to pick up DJ Ra here if they play it right. Unfortunately, it's not the right heroes for this. They need the Windrunner. Still dead. I don't think MB's big enough yet. And finally, Huskar has picked up that AC and the Sheepstick is picked up on Dendi. So that's going to be the pickup that we talked about. And I don't think it's bad at all, right? It's no, clearly no. one where he can get a lot of damage out onto people. Weeha, we've seen, doesn't have a BKB yet, is the next item that we're going to see on this Windrunner. But hopefully it's not too little too late for the high ground push. I think this is I think this is still a really good time. They've demonstrated that they can still pick off these heroes and I mean anytime you get two sheep sticks and she sticks and an AC together, it's uh gonna be strong. So Dazzle has picked up a lotus orb. Um it's nice here. There are a couple of things it'll reflect, like the silence and quap. She'll have to be careful about who she uses it on. Of course, the paralyzing cask. The dunk interaction may actually... I, I'm not sure whether you meet in the middle or you both dunk to each other's location. Do you meet in the middle of the dunk? That sounds logical. Uh, sorry, but I mean the life break. When you lotus orb, life break a lotus orb target. Actually, I've never seen that interaction before. Well, well you may you be in for, for a treat. <laughs> I'm excited for that one. I, I think it's not a terribly great thing to reflect. Of course, the Huskar takes a little yeah, bit less I would damage there. The Huskar gets the better end of that yeah. exchange. Since it's magical, and of course, he's Huskar. But uh, it'll be interesting. It looks like we're seeing Dendi. He is in a little bit of a bad spot. He does end up throwing out the Sheepstick, but Axmo immediately shackled and Weehaw. He doesn't care about your Requiem Souls, but they have the relocate coming out. There's a gem on the deck. Weehaw is actually pretty low. He needs to get out of there. He does a bit of damage to him, and on the sidelines, it looks like everybody on Secret trying to back out. I'm trying to get the zoom out because Envy, he is going in, but oh no, he doesn't have that Flame God. Doesn't matter. They have pure damage. Ghost Scepter doesn't help against that, and now Misery, can they kite around here? Seneko, he is tracked up. He is in for a world of hurt as Envy just pounds away on him. He might have invis, but your track doesn't care about that. And out of nowhere, Secret have taken out three heroes and Roshan. They know it's about to respawn because this is a max respawn timer. So, Secret have secured themselves three kills and a Roshan. Mm, very nicely done by them, of course. Again, the, the pin take apart strategy coming out of their line, the vision yeah. advantage, the bounty owner, and all their wards nicely placed. Really and nicely done. We can see the net worth shot was reacting to the courier snipes. Okay, I actually hadn't seen this before, but yeah, you can see it shot right back up when the couriers respawned and they got their items off of it. So, fun facts. Um, yeah, we're gonna be going in. We can see lots of MPKB procs coming out from people. It's gonna be excitement. Agus and Cheese, Agus and Cheese. We have dropped this. <laughs> Indeed, that's going to be coming out. And of course, um, I actually am surprised. Who is the cheese on? They put it on Misery. I understand that Ember is going for this Gloss Cannon build, but I was kind of maybe expecting him to get at least the cheese, just in case he's taking a lot of those Burning Spears or something. I think, um, I think if anything, Ember should have gotten the Aegis, and Windrunner yeah. should have gotten the Cheese. I don't think keeping alive the Timbersaw, who's building all these uh, survivable survivability items in the first place, is, is the mm -hmm. right approach. I mean, just very well close out the game maybe with a second life on Timbersaw. I do know he yeah. hasn't been killing himself with the Bloodstone the entire game, so they've been yeah. losing out a little bit on that. It's really interesting. I don't know whether he just didn't I'm want it to sure be pretty sure he forgot about it a lot of times. Oh. Oh yeah, he showed that range creep, Weeha. You got him. Um, yeah, it could be that he forgot about it. It could just be that he's trying to save it for an instance where he can use it actually to heal up his teammates if he gets low. Um, I think it's actually a really great pickup here against the Huskar because, of course, if Huskar bothers to keep attacking you while you're already going to die from Boning Spears, it's a bit of a waste of the Huskar's time if there's anyone else around. But then if he doesn't, of course, it makes it very easy for uh, Timbersaw just to kind of back and then use that Bloodstone to heal up his allies. Yeah. The heal is definitely nice. Again, this game, he died like three times ever since. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, denying the gold is a really big deal and denying the EXP as well, but 
<laughs> oh, it could also be because they have a dazzle. Might be that he was expecting saves from Puppy, but he's not the chosen one. Who knows? Highlight dies, stalking up on to the Quop. Gonna be no such luck since she blinks away. So many ghost scepters this game. I have to say, I'm loving what we're seeing here, both in terms of play and itemization. I think the sheep stick really small. Sheep sticks? Really smart from Navi, and then of course the Ghost Scepters. I mean, Windrunner not exactly got another option once you pop that Ghost. Yeah. Uh, oh, Scepter. Another thing I do want to note: a lot of players tend to do this out of panic. Mm -hmm. When you pick up against the Ember, when you Ghost before the Ember actually slide a fist on you, you dodge the slide. It's as if you're not a target. And oftentimes they try to slide combo with the chain, and it completely mm -hmm. misses. What a lot of players do out of panic is uh, once they get Sleight of Fisted and Chain, they'll use yeah. the Ghost Scepter, and it's already too late, and they're just gonna take extra damage from the Chain. Of course, the Ember can't right click you, but burning, yeah, from yeah. the Flame God. So... How does that work with Cleave though? Does the Cleave still affect you? I know Cleave ignores Evasion. I'm not sure on the damage type because Ghost Scepter is all physical. It's yeah, it's still physical damage, so it doesn't matter, right? So. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. Yep, Rock. so it, it is something where if they're alone, if they're trying to use the sleight of fist to catch someone out, which is a really common usage, as you said, best play, you see the ember coming towards you, maybe you just go step to get a little bit of extra distance. And... Yeah, it's, if you're not going to go step there before, it's not worth go stepping after. Uh, unless unless you're going to go step there like uh, when he's running at you or something. Yeah. That's different. And most of the time, people don't have it in the early stages like that. Yeah. So Pilot Dai has been rocking the same items for a long time. Um, I mean, he's a support bounty hunter. We expect him to be poor and sad and only good for killing couriers. There's gonna be a slide of his searing chains onto d 2 But he, again, he doesn't mind getting a little bit low and they have the Lincoln Sphere thrown out on Envy. They have a Lotus Orb as well. Who exactly is rocking this Lincoln's? Is it, oh, well played. It's gonna be on Misery, but I hear Focus Fire coming out and now we are is made into a little bit of a piggy. Is gonna take literally no damage from that death ward and just wandering away. So they just I mean it's not too big of a deal since I still think they have a lot of physical damage coming out from the rest of them, but not great going into a team fight without having your death ward. Yeah, and also it's really nice for the Lotus to be able to dispel the sheep stick disable coming out from Navi. Really nicely done by Puppy there. Is it? It does dispel the sheep stick. I wasn't yeah, sure if it, it was a hard the, dispel. The sheep or... Okay, so it's a hard very, dispel. Very, very strong. It's a 4k gold item, counter 5.5k gold item. And 100%. we can see Dandy now yet to actually change up his item build. He dropped the Helm of Dominator, thinking that he doesn't need as much sustain as Ooh. much on damage. He's got a blink so... as well, so mobility is very important. In this game. Excellent. So it will not move the uh, owner of the spell. Yeah, I have to say, I was expecting Dendi to go into the crit because it did feel like they need a bit more damage, and I think the sheep stick is a nice pickup, but yeah, as you said, he's completely swapped out his items. I actually don't think a satanic is bad here, but it's like, he'd have to get rid of the blink. Maybe when they're base sieging, you go for the satanic. Either way, when you're base sieging, Weeha just doesn't care. He's got an agent. Envy dump, jumps deep in. Gonna remnant away, but Misery, he's in there, and I think they're getting a range track, so Io goes down elsewhere. Weeha still taking quite a bit of damage, but again, has that Aegis, has it for quite a bit longer, I think, now, and might just end up getting the Racks, but Dijeral, he is pounding away on people. He's taking a lot of pure damage at the same time from the shock room. But I don't know if they have the rest of the damage output. And the death ward is back up. We are gonna wander away. Actually, just pops deep BKB. Was that a first hit bash? No, I think that was just the duration of the death ward. They get stunned out. They've finally broken the base. It's gonna be Secret, the first to do that. And Dendi thinking about that Requiem of Souls, but I think Secret might just back out since Weeha no longer has Aegis, no longer has BKB, but he wants this Rax! A huge slide of his Searing Chains coming on, and then they get Dijira as well! They just have too much damage, it looks like, coming out from the lineup of Secret. Axel is gonna post pop that Ghost Scepter, but it's not enough, and now Weeha, he's gonna have Focus Fire back up in three seconds, and he's gonna walk away on this tower. These Lincoln Spheres and Lotus Orbs doing so much work on the lineup of Secret! Yeah, and again, Navi is just not able to find the opening. The Wisp as well as the Witch Doctor down. Do they have enough tools? Here we go. Oh, MV just blinks in, gets off the Searing Chains onto two. We all may be a little piggy, but nobody seems to care on the lineup of Secret. And Misery, he is playing all up in their faces, finally gets silenced up. But this damage from Dijer Ra is at the point in the game where the Searing Chains aren't nearly as scary as they used to be. Pure damage coming out from Misery again. Dijer Ra, if he goes down here again, he'll be dead for extra time since he used the buyback there. And now We are just waiting on that focus fire. One more second and goodbye melee racks and here he goes he is doing a lot of damage he doesn't even have his crit stick on him and that'll be that they decide to back out so well played from secret don't know yet how long the roshan spawn time will be but they also did a really great job of burning that aegis right about at the time that it was going to expire it was really close secret just taking this whole game very methodically from here on out and uh again we need this this sf this game gonna need like eight slots worth of items but he just can't get it he doesn't have yeah. enough uh, inventory space and 
<laughs> Even if he finishes the Daedalus, if he opts for that here on out, uh, he still needs the BKB to be able to fight this. It's not the fact that he's going to sheep himself through the Lotus Orb, it's uh, it's just so many disables and magic damage coming out on the side of Secret that can disrupt like disrupt the purpose of why he has a Blink Dagger in the first place. If you want to be mobile, and if you want to get on top of him, you need to make sure when you're on top of him, you can actually do something. No, yeah. he just cannot get on top of it. I think it was really also a bit of a draft issue. Secret got a perfect lineup to pick the Ember Spirit into, and that was when they second picked the Ember Spirit. Or it was either second or fourth. I forget who had the first yeah, They pick. certainly are picking part. I, I do think, again, their strategy is a, a bit easier to execute in the sense that you don't have to fight at all. But if you consider the fact that how they have been fighting and how they have gotten cut off, I feel like Navi definitely had opportunities to push the issue. I just don't think they took the opportunities when they saw them. So it has a little bit to do with the offlane Queen of Pain as well. She's about to die, but... Oh goodness, and as you say, she's about to die. There's gonna be a relocate coming out as I'm checking over items. Misery taking a lot of damage, but he may go down. There's gonna be the Shallow Grave. Will he finally use that suicide? Is it time, Misery? He does! Well played. See, he was just waiting for Puppy to help him out the whole time. I know. Oh, and what happens here? Axmo, he has gone really far out. And Windrunner's gonna shackle him, focused by a goodbye. I... That was a buyback. That's, that's a dieback now. Oh. Yeah, let's take a quick look -sees at the status. We have one buyback left on Dendi. Albeit, they're not rocking a lot of them on Secret, but at the same time, uh, they're in the dominant position. Although, we are at the state in the game where anybody makes a mistake, you can lose a Rax. Because they I mean, do Dendi's have exposed. buyback is completely irrelevant. He needs to drop either Blink or Crystallis and finish up the BKB. He cannot fight this game without a BKB. It's just not yeah. happening. Oh, we're going to be seeing DJR shackled up again. They managed to... St oh, goodness. We He's taking too much damage. He manages to get off the Shallow Grave in time. But Dendi hitting like a truck with that MKB. It doesn't care about your Windrun. And maybe this will make Secret play a little bit more carefully. But it looks like they're content to push in again. MB, MB with the... Okay, I don't think I've seen this on an Ember Spirit before. This just MB things. Oh, never mind. All cell blown up. No time to talk about MB things. He's going to get the Searing Chains out onto DJR as well. Even though it's not doing huge amounts of damage. It's just zoning him. It allows Weeha to just casually poke away at the melee racks. And Envy, he might just go for another blink in. Searing Chains, Remnant away. If you don't think you can hit him on the Slide of Fist, and oh goodness, speaking of Slide of Fist, DJ Raw, he's almost toggling, seeing what he can do here. The Lincolns has been broken on Misery, but that Life Break, it has a very short cooldown. They could go in again. He's getting ready for it, it looks like. He just needs a target to go in on him. Now it's Dendi. He's the one in a lot of trouble. I expect an immediate buyback, but he has to go for it. And Sanego, he bones down. DJ Raw gonna go. GG's might be cold if Dendi doesn't manage to do mad work with this buyback. And even if he does, GG's may be cold. What is he gonna do? The Searing Slide of Fist ends up missing. They call the GG. We're going into a third game in this last chance survival stall ladder action. Yep, and what better game to ask for than between Navi versus Secret, with Secret yeah. finally picking up their first win in what feels like it's been ages. Yeah, um, either way, I'm super excited. Let's get ourselves into that third game as soon as possible, folks. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under. We've had Vengeance